Alright, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is, and right here, right now, we actually have the one and only, we got the legendary Chili Powder right here, live on the line, man. How are you doing this evening? Man, doing pretty good, doing pretty good. I gotta say, first and foremost, man, it is an honor just to have you on my radio station, Airwaves, this evening, man. I have been a fan for many, many years, man, so it's it's just, just a blessing to be able to converse with you this evening. Man, I really appreciate it. I've been appreciating uh, just uh, watching the work that you do. I'm hearing so much about you. Hey, man, I appreciate I appreciate that, man. I just I just do what I do for the love of hip hop, man. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, me personally, I'm not a huge fan of this new mainstream stuff. I'm I kind of live like I'm in the '90s still, so I like that real rugged raw boom bap, and I want to help keep that keep that sound alive. Man, I agree with you 100%, man. I mean, I'm liking some of the new stuff, man, but I still like that raw, you know what I mean? Oh, I most, def- I most definitely agree with that, man. You, you can't go wrong with, with that, with, that with, with the stuff that you that people like you do. You can never go wrong with that genre of hip-hop. Man, come on, man. It's some of the best. <laughs> but, Chili, I know you're a busy guy, man, so I'm going to dive right into this interview, but I want to take you back to the beginning of your iconic career, and I just have to have to ask, what made you decide to get into the music industry initially, man? Because you were so good at what you do. Your roots run so deep. You know, it was. I think that uh, during that time, man, I was just watching some of the greats do their thing, man. And I would have never thought that I would uh, actually end, in, end up running into Master P or any of that, man. It just ended up happening, man. It made a whole lot of sense at that time. You know, and then at the same time, I ran into two stories. And uh, he was doing his thing, man, so I was just really inspired, man. And speaking of a few a few seconds ago when you actually brought up Master P, you were also a member of the group True, the Real Untouchables, man. I was wondering, how did you initially get get connected with Master P and, of course, joining that amazing hip-hop group? Man, it was crazy, man. First, I ran into this cat, Taiwan, who I went to school with. He was from New Orleans, so he kind of introduced me to Master P as far as uh, having one of his cassettes. He's like, hey, man, this cat, he's from where I'm from. So, you know, we listened to the record, and I was checking it out. I said, oh, it's wild. It's crazy. And then next thing you know, in Richmond, uh, I was over at the college, and I was playing basketball, and I ran into the cat myself. Turns out him and I, we was over there shooting, playing, playing on the same team. And by the sounds of it, everything just led from there, man. You know what I mean? You guys did some phenomenal things together. No, it all made a whole lot of sense, man, because uh, he was already aware that I was doing the music, and uh, he knew about some of my folks out there like this and still and such, and uh, so it all made a whole lot of sense, man. He ended up inviting me to the studio over there at K. Lou, and then it was history from there. And I, and I remember as well that you, you were only a member of that group for a, sh- for a short period. I, th- I believe it was 89 to 91 or 92. If you don't want me asking, what actually made you decide... Just to just just to leave true and actually just uh, go sorry venture into a solo into a solo career sorry. Well, I mean, the reality was uh, he was working on records. He was traveling around a little bit, and uh, he was starting to catch some success. At the same time, I was uh, working on my record, and then uh, he told me uh, he should try to get some more information on how this thing works and all that. So I started really investigating myself and doing the research. Besides what I was learning from him, and then uh, we ended up putting up. Actually, I ended up just putting out my own record on uh, on uh, at that time Hood Records. So I ended up starting a label too. And speaking of that record in '92, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that was actually late night uh, G- Gafflin, man. I, I was wondering, man. I was wondering if you can tell our listeners a bit more about this iconic EP, and of course, is it actually available to be streamed or purchased today? It's still available right now to be purchased. Late Night Gaffin was a uh, good record because uh, it actually launched my name, established me as a uh, solo artist. As far as uh, we had a song on there called uh, Thank and Drink, and I had Sonny's Creation on there, Ambush, and Shady Eight. And uh, we would have never knew that that record was going to take off for us because at the same time, Pit Boy, he had a record out with a similar sample. And uh, it, just, it was just timing. It just all worked out. So because that record was already popping on the radio, my record popping on the street. And I got to say as well, the one the one song that I really enjoyed man, off that record was actually the the, the motherfucking beat that I believe was featuring Ambush. 
That's right. With Ambush, DJ Ambush, yeah. That was good stuff, man. I mean, at that time, Ambush was doing all the tracks. He was coming up with the samples and all that good stuff. I called it Late Night Gambling because I was really, uh, I used to listen to MC8 a whole lot. That was one of my favorites. And, uh, it all worked out, man. It made a whole lot of sense at the time. And also as well, man, in the year 96, you actually released uh, your your debut uh, your debut studio record uh, titled uh, "Way Too Real." I was wondering if you can tell our listeners a bit more about this iconic record, and, and what was it like just being in the studio creating that masterpiece? That record was real nice, man. Way too real because uh, at that point I really knew how uh, I really wanted to flow on the record. We had a uh, super production, K. Lou, uh, Four Quarter. Uh, a few others, man, it just made a whole lot of Parker, a few others, it just made a whole lot of sense. We had a studio, it was my first time really in the big studio as far as uh, recording my own stuff. And, uh, you know, I just came up with the concepts and, you know, since I had somebody that was on the board who was going to really make it make sense, the record just made a whole lot of sense in the end. And then we got a lot of, uh, got a lot of good breaks from that because at that point, at that time, uh, JT from NCD, they had a, uh, they uh, had a record they did the back to the hotel, and then they got me about getting on the uh, Plans Association with them. So, so many things happened, man. Plus, we ended up shooting videos. And so, on California Music Channel and a whole lot of good, you know, we're doing a lot of shows everywhere. It just was making a whole lot of sense from that record, man. And also, I remember as well that actually it was actually produced, that record was produced as well by K. Lou, also known as Ken Franklin, a phenomenal legendary producer, man, that had his hand in a lot of different uh, hip-hop pots. Oh, yeah, K. Lou, man, that guy's a super producer, man. I mean, you think about his catalog, man, working with everybody from Meat Boys to Snoop and uh, a number of others, man. I mean, it just made a whole lot of sense. I mean, I knew the production was going to be exactly what it was supposed to be. K. Lou, that guy's dope. And also as well, the one, the one record I have to bring it up, and I don't want to make this a showcase of all your records going down the line, but when I was growing up, man, this was personally my favorite record by yours. I think I wore out like five copies when I was a kid, man. It was crazy. But in the year 99, you actually released uh, Retrospect, man, that has 17 banging tracks. I was wondering if you can tell, give us some insight on this iconic record. And, of course, what was it like just creating that per that masterpiece? That record was real nice, man, because uh, I was back and forth from California to Arizona all the time, and... Uh... At that time, I was kind of working with uh, Rich Rowland, so it was just making a whole lot of sense. Went out there and got Sally Cell, a rapper forte, uh, Coolio the Underdog. Uh, met up with some cats from Kansas, man. Got them on a on the record. Uh, uh, what is it? It was a fact from over there, and um, it just made a whole lot of sense. But I had balls and balls. It, it just made sense, man, because uh, I think at that time we were working with Jimmy Weaver as far as studio time, so, you know, it was just working with great people, man, and it ended up working up real well as far as production and all that good stuff. And I got to say as well, my, my personal favorite record off that joint will always be Hit Me Tonight featuring Selly Cell, man. I always, that was always my go-to joint when I when I slid in that CD. Man, that, that was a good record, man. I appreciate uh, Selly Cell jumping on that, but me and Selly Cell, man, we had some good history, man, because I knew that guy, uh, like before he jumped on, we stick with it, man. So it made a whole lot of sense. So that was a good record, man. And also as well, uh, as you mentioned a few moments ago, you were also the CEO and founder of your own label called Powderland Records. I was wondering, what actually made you decide to start up your own label? And of course, who is currently signed to you today? Uh, I just feel like I can do it independently, too. You know, I, I had some lightweight success with the late night guy running with some of the other singles that I put out, so... We only started Pot of Land Records up and uh, had a few artists from the rich on there like Monster Boss and a few others. And, and But now we got Egg One Yola, we got uh, G Plus working side by side, the affiliate. Uh, we got a little Meeks and uh, Princess Maylene. So we got a lot in the works, just working out. And I got to say, you definitely have a phenomenal label as well, man. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what comes next because I already know you guys are definitely cooking up some heat over there. Oh yeah, man. We uh, got a lot going. We're doing we're doing a lot of independent shows and uh, 
I don't know. Pilo has been doing pretty good, man, so he just want to keep the ball rolling. And also as well, man, in the year 2005, you actually collaborated with the legendary Akon on the song The One. I was wondering, how did yourself and Akon get connected? And of course, what was it like just being in the studio working with the king of R&B? Uh, that record with Akon came about because uh, my folks, uh, Baby Bash, had just did a hit record with him. And uh, we was putting out the loyalty record. We had a lot of good features on that record. And... Uh, I wanted to see if I can get Akon on something because I was a fan of his music. And uh, Baby Bash, she actually uh, vouched for me on that. So it just made sense. So I was able to hook up with Akon, get the uh, hook, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a wrap from there. And, and I got to say... Actually, it, that's... Oh, my, my apologies, Chili. Uh, no, no, no. I was going to say that was a real good record because it, uh, it led to me doing shows all over and... Uh, we did, I did radio show, radio tours actually in the West and, and also in the South. Uh, it just led to uh, much better things just from doing that. It's great. And I, and I got to say as well, it definitely is a phenomenal record, man. You, you and Akon def have, that, have that chemistry together that, that I, I really hope down the line we can actually hear, hear another one between you two again, man. But it, I, you don't hear very much from Akon anymore, unfortunately. I think he kind of hung up the microphone for a little bit. I knew he's I know he's doing stuff out there in Africa for his community. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's doing his thing. I mean he's came out to Arizona a few times and actually my, my younger brothers got to hang out with him and uh showed him a good time just based on the fact of us doing that music together, so it all made sense, man. And also as well, man, a year after that in the in the year two thousand six, you actually worked with Napoleon of the Outlaws on his two thousand six album release, Loyalty Over Money where you were featured alongside uh, JT on the on the Get the Party Kraken song. I was wondering, how did you first meet Napoleon? And, of course, what was it like working on that project? Because I think that was one of Napoleon's last projects before he actually retired from the music industry. Uh, that was real nice working with uh, Napoleon on that, man. Because uh, while he was around, while he was out here, I actually got to do a few shows with him. Uh, we, did, we did a two-part tribute out there in Tucson. That was real nice. And uh, at that time, I, that was my first time meeting Danny Boy, so that was that was some cool stuff as far as him doing some singing. He got to sing on something for me. And then, uh, I don't know, it was just a great experience, man, especially with all the history that comes alongside with, you know, just working with Napoleon, period. And I, I got, also got to give a shout-out to Napoleon, Napoleon as well, man, because he's doing some phenomenal things out there in Saudi Arabia. He, I believe he just opened up his second coffee shop not too long ago. He's definitely very invested in his businesses. Oh, yeah, that guy's super active, man. I, man, I like to see him keep, uh, do a whole lot more, man, because he's on top of it. And also, as well, you actually have a new project out that's actually available over on your website uh, titled X-Files Volume 1. I was wondering, uh, can you tell us a bit more about that project? And, of course, for the listeners that haven't already purchased it, when they go ahead and do that, what can they expect from it when they actually snag themselves their copy? Hey, the X Files is a uh, continued project, man. I'm keeping going. I'm kind of like dropping some new, like uh, snippets every other month, just to uh, keep people, you know, interested in what I'm doing as far as over here at Powerland. And uh, it's just some good stuff. We got a lot of videos coming. We got actually we got a few of them already shot. We just got them in the works to get them out. So we're gonna put a lot into marketing and promoting that record. So I think it's gonna be some good stuff. And I have to ask as well, as pertain pertaining to the X Files, do you actually have any hard copies available for the listeners that do still love do still love CD copies? Uh, hard copies will be available next month, so I'm looking forward to it. And also, we're thinking about getting some vinyl also. I gotta say, the vinyl is definitely a good choice. A lot of people are actually going back in time, going going back, going for the vinyl, man. So. I think that's definitely will be in a be a phenomenal a phenomenal sales on that. Oh yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be real good. Actually, uh, Minutes don't reach out to me on uh, re-releases some of the old uh, records like Way Too Real or Rich Mentality and the Retrospect, and uh, they wanted to do the vinyl on it, so it's making a whole lot of sense. And I also saw on Instagram as well, man, that tomorrow you actually have a concert uh, called Fright Night. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit more about this concert, and of course, if they're in the area, 
where can they actually snag themselves some last minute tickets to actually see Chili Powder live and in person? They can always reach out to me on www.chilipowder.net to get those tickets, or they can reach out to uh, A1 Yellow Man or Jeep Plus, uh, Jackie Jule. All of them have tickets. Uh, the show is in Tempe. Uh, I've been doing little concerts like every month for a while, you know what I mean, until the COVID came. But now we're starting over again, so we're going to about to hit the streets up and uh, have continued shows. Next show is on November 20th, so we just want to keep it active. And I gotta say, I, I gotta say, it's good to see. Uh, it's good to see legends like yourself still hitting the stage and entertaining, man. You know, especially staying consistent on the shows as well, man. I, I really wish I was out in your area so I can slide on through to a concert, man. Because you know what I mean. Just seeing Chili Powder yourself tear up the microphone would be would be phenomenal. And I can appreciate that, man. You know, I always tell folks all the time, man. You don't stop playing a good time because you get older, man. You just, you know, keep on refreshing your skills up with it, man. So that's the way I look at it with my penmanship, man. I love writing. I love doing production. I do a lot of production myself. A1 Yola Man and Ray Bentley, those that's on the team. So we just like to keep it going. You know what I mean? We got a lot of youngsters we're about to introduce. So it's just making a whole lot of sense. But I have to ask, man, what is next for yourself, Chili Powder? Of course, as we already as, as we already spoke about, you have the concert there tomorrow. But is there anything we happen to miss? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? Well, we still got you here live on the Canadian Airways this evening. Uh, we got the cooking with Chili. We got that coming. We've already filmed a lot of that. We got a uh, children's book in the works. Uh, actually, trying to set up a children's little program similar to Yo Gabba Gabba. And uh, that's already in the works. So, I mean, we're we making a lot happen over here. And plus, we're doing some uh, short films. So, it's, it's a lot in the works. And I got to say as well, man, it definitely would be good to actually uh, c catch you actually on the big screen with one of these short films. I was wondering, just going into the short film here for a minute, uh, what can our listeners expect from these short films when they do actually hit the streets? Uh, I think it's going to be... Real good, because, I mean, we kind of doing some things that are similar to Tales in the Hood, you know what I mean, something like that, or uh, also we just kind of like, uh, I don't know, I've been watching, you know, what some of the others been doing with it, so don't make it work, it's going to be nice. And also, Chili, this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. Just like a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. But most of all, man, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything Chili Powder if they're not already doing so. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Chili Powder, Twitter, Twitter at Chili P, uh www.chilipowder.net is the uh, website. And uh, we get a lot of action on there. And then uh, at the same time, give a shout-out to A1 Yola. That guy is super pushing. I'm going to see him keep push, increase the authentic. C Plus, uh, Lil Meech, Spencer's May Lane, uh, Austin Boss, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, got, we got a lot of videos happening with Kool-Aid. We got a lot of animated videos. I don't know if you're aware of those. We got a lot of avatars created. And uh, he actually got an animated movie coming soon. So that's going to be pretty nice, too. It's already complete. I did, I did actually watch your Kool-Aid video as well, man. I got to say that I, lo I love the animation on that music video. It was definitely phenomenal. And I like it. I think it's a good move. Uh, I've been watching a lot of others get into it. So it's just making a whole lot of sense, man. And that's what we want to play with as far as with the children's books and children's stories. So it's going to make a whole lot of sense. There'll be a lot of evolving with Pilot Land. So I think it's going to be nice. And I, I definitely agree with that pertaining to the animation, because especially when you, if you collaborate with an individual overseas, it's, it's sometimes easier to make an animated music video than fly, either flying yourself all the way out there overseas or the individual to America. It just makes more sense, like you said, just to actually have that, uh, that avenue where you can still collaborate and still make music videos. That makes a whole lot of sense, because that's definitely what we're trying to do. We're trying to build up our overseas allies and make it make sense, because that's what we're working with as far as doing all the animation. So uh, that's been making a whole lot of sense. I'm trying to make sure all the artists that's working with me at least have a, a chance of doing one of those animated videos or more, and uh, we're trying to keep it going like that. 
And I gotta say first and foremost, Chili, thank you so much, man, for just giving us a bit of your time here this evening and just sliding into the 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM airwaves, man. It truthfully was an honor and most definitely a privilege to welcome such a legendary individual like yourself, man. Thank you for years of uh, monumental music as well, man, that all of us had the opportunity to enjoy. Hey, you know, I really appreciate it. Make appreciate you guys having me, so it's all good. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome, Chili. Thank you so much again, man, and definitely have yourself a wonderful night. Yes, 